We ready, Chris? Yeah, except you're wearing a branded shirt, which is obviously going to put a stain over our journalistic integrity. I mean, are people going to be confused? Olympus doesn't make cameras anymore. The EM1X was just discontinued, and, and it's laundry day. You're a shell. Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. It is Jordan Drake here to talk about a really exciting new product. And I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. For the last like decade, whenever I talk about external monitors, people always say, well, why can't I just use my smartphone as an external monitor? I and mean, it's got this beautiful, bright display on it, but you've never been able to get an HDMI feed into your phone. Now, there were exceptions, like Sony brought out the Xperia, which had an HDMI input on it, and Axoon, as well as a bunch of other companies, make an HDMI to Android phone adapter. And iOS users have just been basically left out in the cold until now. Axoon has just brought out an option that kicks out a signal to your iPhone or your iPad to give you live monitoring and more. Okay, so what exactly is the Axoon SEMO? Well, it's the little white piece that you see right here, sandwiched in between your phone and the camera. But what's interesting with it is it accepts an HDMI input and then kicks out a USB signal that you can plug into the lightning port on your iPhone or iPad. There's also a five volt out if you wanna power any other accessories and it all runs off very common, very affordable Sony NPF batteries. Now, if you don't need the phone clamp, you can actually remove that make the entire converter box incredibly small as well for something like a rig. Okay, so what does this doodad do? Well, as you can see right now, it gives you a monitoring feed from any camera that can output an HDMI signal, which is pretty much all of them right now. Yeah, but preferably an Olympus, am I right? You unscrupulous. It will about. work with Olympus or OM system or really any camera brand out there. I'm not particular to anyone. But we get a full suite of professional monitoring tools when we kick this out. We get waveforms, we get histogram, peaking, false color, anamorphic de-squeeze, we got that. You want frame lines, it's all there. So what if you wanna record log and have a monitoring LUT? Well, that's also supported on this. It already has a whole bunch of LUTs built right into it for a bunch of different log types from different camera companies. And all of those assist tools on the monitor are gonna show up on the very bright, very sharp display that you get on any modern iPhone or iPad. All you have to do is download the free Axoon app in order to access that. Now this is only outputting a 1080p signal up to 60 frames per second. So no, you're not gonna be able to use this with like high speed 120, 240 frame recording. And if you do wanna punch in and check focus, I would use the camera's punch in button to check it because then it'll be looking at the full sensor area. I wouldn't use the punch in focus on the monitoring software because then it's just punching in on a 1080 image. It's not gonna be all that sharp. As soon as I heard what this monitor did, my first thought was like, how bad is the lag gonna be if it's taking an HDMI signal, converting it into something that my iPhone can understand? But once I got it, I found, yes, there is a little bit of latency there. You can see it right now, but it's certainly not unusable. I found I was still able to manually focus and reframe shots very easily. When I tested the Axoon against the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus, I found the results were fairly similar. Yes, the external monitor was a little bit faster, but they were pretty comparable. Now, I'm primarily planning to use this as a monitor, but it does have the ability to record the video feed coming in as well. Now, before you get too excited, this is only capturing 8-bit 1080 video up to 60 frames per second, just like the HDMI feed coming out on it. And it's not doing anything fancy. You certainly can't send a raw feed out from your camera for it, but I can find some real uses for it. I mean, personally, for example, we're constantly recording the autofocus performance and the menus of these cameras. I record to an Atomos Ninja as big ProRes files, then I have to download the SSD. How sweet would it be if I could just record those files to my phone and then airdrop them to my computer when I get home and start editing them immediately? I mean, that's a very personal use case. I can also think of lots of situations where you don't need the absolute highest quality recording and it would be great to just have it right on your phone instantly for you to upload and share. As well, this does give you the option to send out a live feed from your camera using your phone signal, but it's not quite as streamlined as you might expect. You have to enter a stream key and then use something like YouTube in order to send that video signal out. Now, we are hoping to see direct integration with other apps in the future. It's just not available yet. This is a brand new product. Now, I have to say one of my biggest complaints with this is just the build quality on it is not exceptional. The tilt here, you actually have to use an included Allen key in order to adjust it. I'd much rather just have a hand tightenable screw. And it's nice, there is actually a cold shoe on top of this for attaching a microphone, for example, but it is all plastic, doesn't feel very robust. I would not put a lot of weight on that. Now, because this is the first ever HDMI to iOS converter, I was 
honestly shocked that as many things work properly as do in this device, but there are still some complaints, and I think a lot of them could be addressed by just having a more premium model up on this. The first thing is, we've got the recording out going into the phone, but it's not capable of charging the phone, so your phone battery will be depleting as you're using the monitor here. It's using big NPF batteries. It'd be awesome if it could also charge your device while it's monitoring. I don't think it would be too complicated to just add a little charging pad for your smartphone into the phone clamp right here to keep things topped up while you're using this as a monitor. I already mentioned the build quality on this isn't the best, but one other big issue that I have with it is it's not a clicker switch for the power, it's a button. And the only way to tell if the unit is on is this incredibly dim little power light right here with an equally dim little battery indicator right underneath it. Just make that a whole lot brighter or put an, a physical power switch on that issue would be addressed. I mean, this is an incredibly affordable device, 179 US dollars for it, but I would happily pay a premium like 250 US dollars for the exact same unit with those improvements implemented. And here's the beauty of this device. On my iPhone 13 Pro's beautiful bright display, you can see that Chris is hypocritically wearing a Sony Alpha t-shirt, a Nikon D850 jacket, a beers and cameras hat. Anyways, if you're planning to use the Axun Simo primarily as a monitor, I was really surprised by how well thought out all of the features are. The question is, what if you also need a recorder? And there, and looking at an Atomos Ninja 5, Ninja 5 Plus, a Blackmagic Video Assist, those are gonna give you the option to actually record better quality video than what your camera records internally in a lot of situations. They'll give you the capability to record raw video. I would say those are primarily recorders with a little bit of monitoring functionality, where I would look at this as a monitoring tool with a little bit of recording functionality. And if that's what you need, this is a wonderful device, especially for that very, very low price. It's pretty cool to be able to look at the first of what's probably gonna be an entirely new category of product. We'll probably be looking at some new monitoring tools here in the future. If you want to see those, definitely subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, check out like our Twitters and our Instagrams if you want to see more tomfoolery like what Chris is involved in right now. Anyways, I'm done. We'll see you later with more DP Review TV. Be professional.